Hi there, it's Monica Wahi. Welcome to my lecture, How to Find Peer-Reviewed Articles. Now, before you watch this lecture, you might benefit from watching my other video, How to Benefit from a Professional Society as a Nursing Student. And you may wonder what that has to do with this one. Well, in that one, I explain how the peer-reviewed literature actually gets there. So it's a little bit easier to understand when searching for it if you understand how it gets there first. So the learning objectives of this lecture are, at the end of this lecture, the learner should be able to find a PDF of a peer-reviewed journal article on Google Scholar, explain how colleges get access to peer-reviewed journals for their employees and students, explain what peer-reviewed means, and state one downside of the peer review process. So this is what I'm going to cover, is I'm going to first help you understand how to know if a journal or article is actually peer-reviewed or not. Because if you're looking for peer-reviewed information, you want to be only lurking in certain places where they have it. Then I'm going to show you how to use Google Scholar to look for peer-reviewed literature. And then finally, I'm going to talk about what happens if the peer-reviewed literature you're finding in Google Scholar is the full um, text of it is not available. Then what do you do? So let's start with peer review. So what is it and how is it done? And I'm going to explain this by using a demonstration, which is the American Journal of Public Health. That's the main journal in public health. So here we go. All right, let's go look for our American. Oh, look at that. I'm always looking at that. Um, here's the American Journal of Public Health. So whenever you go to a journal's website, you're going to see some of the same things in the menu. You're going to say uh, some stuff. Let's see here about this journal. About this journal is here. You're always going to have an about this journal. You also have an authors here that is instructions if you want to submit uh, something to be published. You'll also have information about subscriptions in case you want to have a subscription to this journal. Um, I always like to start with about this journal um, because the, that tells you whether it's peer reviewed or not. Of course, most of these that you'll find on Google Scholar are peer reviewed, but some of them aren't. And so you really have to read it. Um, some are more magazine-y, you know, that they, they just have an editorial board that decides on reporters writing about certain health issues, and those are not peer reviewed. So what does peer reviewed actually mean? Well, the reason why I picked the American Journal of Public Health is it kind of explains it on its um, About This Journal website, which doesn't always happen for these journals. In fact, some of them are very confusing. But the first thing I want to point out is about this journal it really is important if you're going to be an author. If you're going to submit something to, to a journal, you need to read this part because if you're going to submit something on not public health, it won't work. This is what they're interested in is public health stuff. If you are a nurse, you might ha have done some public health work, but if you do some straight up nursing work that doesn't relate to public health, they're going to just not be interested. So that's why it's important to read this. But down here, they talk about their peer review, and I just wanted to read it out loud for you. So reviewed papers usually re receive careful scrutiny by three reviewers, an additional assessment by the responsible associate editor, deputy editor, and editor-in-chief. Initial screening results in rejection of the majority of the manuscripts within two days to 30 days of submission. So what that means is, let's say that you actually submit a paper there, they will look at it right away and decide whether they even want to go forward with it. They, if they want to go forward with it, they actually give it a review by these three reviewers. Um, so for those papers that are selected for review, the time to first decision is about three months because they need all three of them to review it and get back to the journal. So the overall time from submission to acceptance, which includes revisions by the authors, is about 4.8 months. Now, what that doesn't say is that actually getting it published after that 4.8 months um, takes a while because it's a journal you know it's got to wait you got to wait in line and so for that reason um, if you do watch my other video how to benefit from uh, joining a nursing society you'll understand one of the benefits is you get to go to conferences um, which you can do without joining the society but at the conferences they'll show the early research so you don't have to wait this long for it to get published and the conferences I'll often peer review the abstracts so this is what peer reviewed is. It's the journal facilitates all this. And you're probably wondering, well, who are these three reviewers? Well, sometimes one of them is me. 
literally they'll email me and say, will you review this paper? And they don't pay me, right? And the reason why they don't pay me is when I send a paper in for them, somebody else has to review it. So we have to scratch each other's backs. Um, so one of the things I also wanted to show you is that there is an editorial board for this journal. Like you saw the mention of the deputy editor and all that. Well, the American Journal of Public Health is, I think it's located in DC, but you'll notice the editorial staff is not in DC. It's all over the place. In fact, these are just normal people. These are uh, academicians at their various universities. And um, they, so they're all over the place. They, they don't go into work at the American Journal of Public Health every day. They go into work at, for instance, here's somebody in Brazil who goes to work in Brazil every day. It's just that whenever something needs to be done at the American Journal of Public Health and these editorial staff need to do it, like remember that deputy editor thing, oh, here, here's the deputy editor. That person may need to review something. And so that gets sent to that person by this journal. So after all that, you're probably wondering, well, who actually works at the journal? Well, it's mostly administrative types. So if you're actually, I've never actually been to a journal. I guess maybe I have, because once in a while they'll have the journal's office within like a little tiny like office in a university. If I've been to those, but I haven't been to like a bigger journal where they actually rent a little office space. But if you were to walk in there, you'd find that most of the people there are like administrative types. What they're doing is um, they're harvesting the submissions off of the portal. Like you have this online portal where you submit your um, manuscripts, you know, kind of like Blackboard or, you know, you would have in college, only this is for submitting manuscripts. And so they use that portal to communicate with the author, say whether things are rejected, um, you know, like bounce submissions that don't qualify. And then they also use it to communicate with the editorial board. Um, the peer reviewers, what r normally happens to me is I write pretty good stuff and I'll have to shop it around to a few um, journals. I'll end up submitting it to maybe five or more before somebody wants to review it. But once they review it, it takes a while uh, because the reviewers will say, you know, things that they want changed about it. And then that's called revise and resubmit. And then I have to revise it and resubmit it. And then they have to relook at it. And so it, and, and that's all um, controlled through this portal. So what the people actually working at the journal do is they manage all of this communication. Because like I said, the editorial board is spread out all over academia, all over the world. And so the journals used to be physical, like they used to be things you'd get in the mail and then you put them on your shelf. Um, now you have to, if you buy a journal or subscribe, um, you, you have to pay, I think, more usually if you want that physical journal sent. Mostly they're just online and they're in uh, PDFs. So why all this peer review? Like you noticed it's a big deal. You notice it delays the publication of everything. Well, you'll see on the slide, I've got this uh, screenshot of Bad Science. That's one of my favorite blogs. It's by Dr. Ben Goldacre, who is an epidemiologist like me, but he's unlike me in the sense that he's a guy and he's in the uh, UK and that's a very different healthcare system. So he complains about a lot of different things than me. But one of the things that we both complain about, he doesn't know me, I wish he knew me because um, I'm a big admirer. He's also really funny, go watch his TED talk. But anyway, if you do watch his TED talk, you'll notice he's really into things like publication bias. And he, like me, sees challenges with the peer review process. Um, like one of them is, see that word falsification? If I am like totally evil and just make up my own data, at least make it up and pretend to analyze it and write a paper, these peers out there, are they're not going to be able to tell I did that, right? And also, like, what if my best friend Bob submits a paper and I get it to review it and I know it's Bob? You know, what, what am I going to do? I'm going to just approve it, right? Unless I'm mad at Bob, then I'm going to backstab him. So as you can see, and some, some of the journals will do blinded peer review, so I don't know it's Bob and Bob doesn't know it's me, or sometimes Bob knows it's me and I don't know it's Bob, whatever. They try to fix it, but there are still problems. Um, I'm not as convinced that peer review works as much as maybe Dr. Goldacre does because Dr. Goldacre is more like those people at the academic places that serve on the editorial boards and I'm more like the underpaid women that work at the journal harvesting things off of that portal. And so from my perspective, I think it doesn't work. And I think it needs, uh, Dr. Goldacre thinks that it just needs reform. I can't imagine how much reform we would have to do. Uh, I think we need more. 
and I'm not sure if you'll agree with me um, as you go through your studies in nursing, but you just might. I just wanted to show you a few examples of what you might see on an About This Journal page. And I, I took the screenshot from the Journal of the American Psychiatric Nurses Association. This is About This Journal. And I just put a circle around where it said peer reviewed. So that's really where you go if you want to make sure that the journal you're looking in is peer reviewed. Um, another word that's used for it is refereed. So I'm um, using this example of the online journey of nursing, journal of nursing informatics and showing you that they say referee. So kind of like um, soccer or something, right? So think critically when you're uh, citing a source from the scientific literature. Uh, make sure it's peer reviewed if you are citing it as a peer reviewed source. Not everything has to be peer reviewed. Um, but you should really go to the journal's website and read about the journal. Look for about this journal, see what it's aiming for. That's usually where it's going to say if it's peer reviewed or refereed. There are a lot of problems with journal websites. I, I know because I submit papers there and I, I do peer review, like I said, and sometimes I go to their sites and I cannot even figure out if it's peer reviewed. What I often do is go to the instructions to authors because in there, you don't have to follow like everything, but what you're looking for is a hint where they have to send it out. Um, the American Journal of Public Health was very explicit about this, but if they're not explicit, it usually is in the instructions to authors where they talk about whether they have to send it out to reviewers or not. So that gives you then a clue. Now we're going to move on to searching for peer-reviewed literature. And so now that you know what it is, well, how do you go find it? And it's so different now than when I first started doing this, that I'm just going to cut to the chase, okay? You always hear about PubMed, and you always hear about Ovid, and you always hear about Medline, and I just want to be clear with you what that is, okay? And this is going to sound like an old lady story, but here it goes. So when, when I was young, uh, in the 90s, um, what we used to do is uh, we would need peer-reviewed literature but what would happen is, remember those physical journals I told you about? Like they would be printed and a copy would go to these people um, at the National Library of Medicine and they would take the abstracts from the beginning, you know, the short paragraph summaries, and they would type that into a big database. And that big database is actually PubMed right? Um, but in the olden days, obviously, only special people had access to type in this database. And that would be these people receiving these journals, uh, you know, hot off the press, they'd go type it in. And I remember sometimes I received the journal too, and I'd uh, want to go look in PubMed, and I couldn't find it yet because I hadn't typed it in. Well, how did I go look in PubMed? Well, I had to go down the hall to the uh, medical library and where they had a terminal where I could log into what was called Ovid or Medline. Well, what that was, was basically a front end. That was a way that I could search this PubMed and um, find these uh, scientific articles. But we hadn't invented PDF yet. So what I would do is just find out about them. And then I'd have to go to a shelf where what they would do is like take all the journals from the year and they'd bind it, like they make it into a hardcover book. And then I'd have to go find the right hardcover book and find the right, um, article in it from using the lists I got from searching PubMed using Ovid or Medline, right? And then what I do is photocopy them so I didn't lose them. Um, and then I'd have paper everywhere. So I'm so happy this got fixed, okay? So now I'm going to show you how you do it the modern way. All right, well first I'm going to update you on whatever happened to PubMed. Remember how I told you that's where the National Library of Medicine people used to have to get the journal and type in the abstract and get it into um, the database? Well, what happened was PubMed, now that we have the internet, made its own front end on the internet. So you can just go out to PubMed and you can go, I mean, there's still people putting that stuff in the database, but it's probably more automated. So here we are at PubMed and this is me. Um, I'm going to search for myself just to give you an idea of what it's like to search for yourself on here, especially if you publish a lot. So you can see that this is actually me. I really publish this. I really publish this. I'm really on those um, groups. So that worked. But if you're looking for a topic, like maybe nurse burnout, patient safety, like that, you're not going to get good hits. This isn't Google, right? So you get the first hit you get looks pretty good, right? And it's pretty recent. 
But then the second hit we get, Marion's message, take a deep breath. That may be um, related, but it doesn't even really say safety or burnout or nurse or anything in the title. So you are not really going to get, um, you don't want to use this as a search engine. So that brings me to the next thing. So what do you use as a search engine? Use Google Scholar. It's spelled scholar.google.com. And it looks like regular Google, but it actually is looking through the same database and even more than that. It's looking on the web. And since um, PubMed is on the web, you know, you look at how it's blue and stuff like that. It's searching PubMed, but it's searching everything else. So now let's try um, nurse burnout patient safety. And let's see how far we get here. All right. Um, one of the things that's really awesome about this is, as you can see, we're getting like really good hits, but you also can just restrict it very easily to the most recent information because you're not really going to want to go out and um, look for uh, uh, stuff from the 90s, right? So here we go. Uh, this is our first um, search. So let's say I'm actually writing something about this. I can't just look at the um, the abstracts which here like we'll go here here's an abstract right so if you actually go look at that sometimes you can get to the full text but the easier way I find is that if you do the search here you can already tell where the full text is and I'll show you how to decode it um let's just decode this first uh, response so this is HTML HTML what does that mean that well HTML is a language used to program the World Wide Web so the HTML is sort of secret code for this is free text on the web it's like printed on the web page it's not a PDF okay now let's look this is the title here are the authors and see this BMJ that's the name of the journal and this 2012 says the year so you can kind of shop for things in this mode a lot easier than you can in um, this mode like you'd have to click on each one and I know you can set things in PubMed but this is just Google is just set up for searching right it's Google so uh, I, I also want to just go through this um, record for you cited by 369 that means other uh, mostly peer-reviewed literature included this in it, their reference list 369 times and it's like 2015 when I'm recording this and this was in 2012 so this is pretty popular um, they'll talk about the related articles and I think those are often the articles that cited them but what I'm always interested in is this all 17 versions because you'll see <laughs> unlike in the old days there's 17 places that are putting this up on the web and when you go there you'll see that this one NCBI NLM NIH Gov. Like all of these are the same. They're at just different places on the web. This one's the PubMed one. Okay. Like if I can click on this, you'll get to PubMed. Okay. And just notice it's all blue up there, but all different journals are being indexed here. So don't think this is the same journal. It just always looks blue like that. All right. And so this would be the same record in different places. And in fact, let's go to the BMJ one and you'll see that it's full text, right? Um, here, here it is, all of this text, and then you could read it, uh, and then you'd have it, and you wouldn't have to go to the library or anything, it'd just be there. Um, so, also, uh, so that was the L17 version. Also, I want to show you the site. You can click on it, and it'll already, remember APA, it'll already format it for you. But there's a warning. As you can see, BMJ should all be capitalized, and it's not. So, it kind of does its best guess. But you have to go through, you can copy and paste this into a Word document, but you have to go through and um, analyze it to make sure that it's right. All right, so what we just went over was I found um, something on nurse uh, burnout and patient safety in HTML, meaning it was full text on the web. And therefore I could use it because I could read it. And I also talked about some different things uh, here. Um, here's uh, another one. This one is from PubMed and sure enough, it'll be full text. So that's what will happen if I click here. Now, um, when I look over on this one, it says PDF. So I expect to click here and I'll get the PDF of this, but it doesn't always work. Isn't that sad? So you gotta be careful. Now you'll see this next one here, uh, that doesn't have anything here. So what that means is it's probably not free on the web. If I click on all six versions, I can shop and see if there's any, but there aren't any. So that's not available free on the web. Here we have some more HTML, HTML. Oh, look at this, ResearchGate. ResearchGate is Facebook for uh, professors. So as you can imagine, I spend too much time on there and don't get my work done. 
So what happened was Dr. Nargang um, posted this, or one of his or her co-authors uh, posted the PDF on ResearchGate, which you can do if the publisher of the journal says you can do it. So I've logged into my research gate and put up all the ones I'm allowed to put up. Okay. And so this is what happens if you click on this is you get to see uh, the PDF. And if you're using um, Adobe Acrobat like I am, you go down here and you can save the PDF. So why is this so awesome? Well, then you get to read the whole article and you didn't have to uh, go anywhere to do it. You just, it was free on the web. All right. So let's look at, um, some more of these things you'll see that there are ones that don't have anything next to them like this one here if i click on all seven versions and i look and i see there's nothing next to them well then they're not free on the web so what do you do well if you work at a university or college that teaches nurses or doctors um, or you actually go to one you're a student that uh organization has made a contract with the different publishers to have different journals available online um, if you log into your college's library. So I'm going to just give you an example because I work at a library college, which is a nursing college, and I want to show you an example of um, with a particular uh, author. Dr. Lashinger is a, a big author in this area of nurse burnout. And so you can see that, that when I, I put her name in here, we see her recent publication. That's a PDF on ResearchGate. She's so wonderful. Um, but you'll see the next publication here is not on ResearchGate. In fact, you don't see anything here. So what if we want it? Usually the first thing I do is go to all three versions to just make sure it's not on there. But you know, what if we want it? We're going to have to go log into our college portal. Well, I work at Library College, which is a nursing college. So we're going to use my college as an example of trying to get this PDF here that's not available free on the web and see if we can get it through my college. So first I'm going to actually click on this link here because I need to make sure I have all of the information because this is what I'm going to be looking up. Here's here's a title, here's the authors, but I really am going to need this information because that's what I'm going to go do is log into my library online and then look that up. So here we go. This is my library online and you will have one at your college too. Um, and then you go and for me, I go to the nursing database on Ovid. Surprise, Ovid. Okay, so that's what happened to Ovid. Remember how I used to have to go down the hall to the medical library and sit at a terminal? Well, this is essentially what it looked like back then. It hasn't changed much. Um, but you will see that I uh, here on Library College website, it'll say um, what journals is, are carried. Now, how does Library determine this? Well, since it's a nursing college, it wants to carry the nursing journals. There are only so many publishers of journals. So many journals are published by the same publisher. One publisher is named, for example, um, Elsevier. I'll say here. Um, so this publisher publishes a lot of peer reviewed journals. Um, another example is Springerlink. So what happened was Library College went to them and said, we need um, access to these, uh, these nursing journals. And what they said is, okay, well, which ones? And then figured out which ones and then charged them a subscription fee. And then said, how you can get these is you have to get your people to log into Ovid and then go find them and the PDF will be attached. So there's two different ways to do it. And since I, just like with PubMed, I think Ovid's search engine is terrible. What I usually do is exactly what I just did do, which is figure out using Google Scholar what I need and then go, log into the library and then just try to look it up the way I used to. What I used to do is go onto the shelves and I'd look under J, Journal of Nursing Administration, and go find it. Well, we're going to do the virtual version of that. So we're going to go to Journal of Nursing Administration. And then um, this is the ID, but you don't know the password unless you go to or teach at Library College. And so that is how Labre protects their um, subscriptions that they paid for. Okay, so here are, I'm now in the journals website on Ovid at uh, Labre right here. And so let's go back to the citation. Um, 
so this is the title, but this is most important. It's May 2015, Volume 45, Issue 5, page 276. Okay, so that's how you're going to look for it. So it took me a while to realize that um, this, you know, the, the one above refers to this. So like for me, here's 45, see that 45, 5? Um, that's this 45, 5. And then we're going to want to go to 276. So um, 45, 5, right? And then we'll, once you get there, like you'll notice, they start at the beginning of the year with page one, and then they go through the whole year. It made it easier for me when I was going out to those shelves. Um, okay, so now we're at that right one. Let's look here. And this was page 276, right? So we'll go down 239, blah, 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 263. Here it is, linking nurses, blah, blah, blah. And so now you can get the PDF full text, right? And so that's perfectly awesome. But what if when we went to go and um, get this, where did I have it? When I initially went here, what if that journal wasn't on here? Well, that's the writing on the wall. You won't be able to get the PDF then through your college. So uh, when my um, nursing students might write about certain, um, certain diseases, at, at, and they find peer-reviewed literature on um, Google Scholar, they may not be able to actually have access to it um, through our college. And so what happens then is, well, welcome back to Elsevier. Um, you can buy them. And can you imagine paying like $35 for a uh, just one of these articles and you don't even know if you really want it? Um, if you are in the Boston area, I learned that the Harvard Medical Library, if you pay them $35 a day, you can physically go into that library and get what you need um, at, for business, right? Like they, they don't mind. They, they'll give you $35 a day, you can have access. That's the last time I talked to them. They're so kind about that, but you have to go in there. They won't give you uh, remote access unless you actually go there or you teach there. So wh why is it so expensive? Well, in the olden days, uh, remember, I was telling you they had to bind up those books and they had to ha send out the, all those journals. Well, it cost a lot to be a publisher. Now it doesn't cost so much because making PDFs is cheaper. And so a lot of people are kind of mad, like I'm one of them. And so uh, a lot of people want to uh, boycott Elsevier because we write these, um, uh, these peer-reviewed journal articles and then they uh, publish them and we even sometimes have to pay for them to publish them we have to pay some of the costs and then we we can't even get to them like uh, Dr. Lashinger you know has to have uh, this uh, her school has to um, subscribe to this or she would have to pay for it and so if you go to the cost of knowledge this is where um, the researchers are taking a stand and we, we've gotten kind of mad at Elsevier but people have pointed out that they're not the only ones, you know, uh, there's Springer Link, like uh, everyone does it. So when things are not free on the web, it's partly because of this issue. Before I move on, I just wanted to show you the parallel universe of trying to search in Ovid. So uh, if I wanted to do that on, um, instead of clicking here to log in, like I did before, um, I'd be clicking here, like I'm gonna choose this and do search, right? And then it'll make me log in, which is uh, good. Or I guess I'm still logged in. And we'll do OK or cancel or whatever. Um, so I don't even know what that is. Uh, so let's say that I do what I did before. I search for myself. Um, am I even going to find anything? Like, you don't even know. Uh, it says here, no results. I guess I must not have published in anything, but I, I don't even know. Um, this search engine is really sensitive. Like, you can go to advanced search. Uh, let's put an author and just see what we get for Lashinger. And you'll get 16. This is probably the easiest way. You can go over to display. Uh, all of the Ovids pretty much look the same. And then you can see it. Now remember ours was the title started with linking something. We'll see if it came up in here. Um, she, the 16 of them came up. Yeah, and see it's not even in there even though she's actually an author. So I just wanted to show you that this isn't a very good search engine. So you really want to use Google Scholar if you want to find what you're looking for on your subject. So in summary, what if it isn't free? So publishers such as Elsevier publish journals and sometimes uh, 
authors like me will pay extra to make it free on the web but sometimes authors like me don't have any money and so then they end up charging people and uh, also um, if it's not free on the web the only way colleges can get to it you know for their people is to subscribe to these journals through these packages by these publishers and of course every um, college is different they have different amounts of money and they have different people working there and learning there so there's going to be different packages for each college and so I showed you different ways to access subscribe journals through the college library portal that I have um, I'm sure mine looks totally different from yours except for over it tends to look pretty much the same but it's going to have different stuff in it depending on what college you go to and as I said you can pay out of pocket for each of the articles if you just want to buy one one by one that's not free on the web but you'll go broke so in conclusion peer review is the check and balance on the scientific literature peer review is how we make sure that the science that gets out there is has been vetted by other scientists and so therefore peer-reviewed literature takes a while to publish but it's sort of good, like gold because that's what you want to look at for your sources if you're really going to talk about something important in your essays um, and therefore it is really important to have access to peer-reviewed journals and that's part of why I made this uh, video is I wanted to make sure that you understood that you have had access to a lot of stuff free on the web and that was one of the main things I wanted to show you here but also to empower you to look into your own college's library and learn what kind of stuff they have well thanks a lot for watching my video and have fun looking for peer-reviewed articles